Hello everyone. So we are going to be doing example 3b now, which is graphing logarithm transformations. So we're still dealing with transformations, but now instead of exponential transformations, we'll be dealing with logarithm transformations. Okay, so this is very similar to the previous problem. We just now have logarithm functions to deal with. Okay, so the first step we're going to deal with is the parent function. So the parent function Okay, that is the most simplest form of our log graph. Okay, so all we need for the parent function, we need the base of the log and an x. That's it. Okay, so we're going to have y equals log. Okay, the base of my log is the little guy right here hanging out below the log. So log base 5, and then I'm just going to put an x there. Yay! So that's my parent function, you guys. Now, the three points we use for a logarithm are the same kind of points we use for the exponential, but remember logarithms are inverses of exponentials. So all we're going to do is reverse all these points to get our log points. Okay, so instead of sitting there and trying to memorize the log points and the exponential points, if you want to, you can just memorize the exponential points and then just know that you have to invert them for the log graph. That way you don't have to memorize as much. Okay, so for my exponential function, usually our first point is at negative 1, 1 over c, which all that means is you find the reciprocal of the base, which is the c value. Okay, so we're going to be inverting that. So the first thing we're going to do is find the reciprocal of the base. So the base is going to be 5 over 1. So we find the reciprocal of that. That is 1 over 5. Okay, so I'm going to write that first this time, because remember my x and my y are trading spots. Okay, so this will be 1 over 5. Okay, and then my negative 1 is now going to become my y. So we have 1 fifth, negative 1. Okay, then these two will trade spots, so it will be 1, then 0 this time. Holy hot dog. All right, and the last thing, we write the c value, which is the base, and my base is the 5. So I'm going to start with the 5. And then I'm going to write the 1. So these are my log points, which are, again, all my exponential values just inverted or interchanged. That's the fancy way of saying that. Okay, so I'm going to graph these, and I'm actually going to graph these in orange. So my parent function, I'm going to graph in orange so you can see it very, very clearly. All right, guys, in the asymptote equation, remember for log graphs, it is the opposite of what it is for an exponential graph. So the exponential graph, the asymptote was on the x-axis. So now for the log graph, since they are inverses, the asymptote values interchange as well. So now my asymptote is on the y-axis, which is the equation x equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to draw that in first so I know I don't cross the y-axis. It cannot cross. All right, guys, let's plot these points. So my first point is at 1 fifth negative 1. So I'm just going to go over a smidge on the x-axis, just a smidge, and then down 1. Okay, my next point is at 1, 0. And my last point is at 5, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1. All right, guys, so remember, we cannot touch the y-axis. So we got to get real close, but we cannot touch... Okay, I think I made it. All right, and then this graph will just kind of continue like so. All right, so there's my parent function. Holy hot dog, you guys. All right, now when you do transformations, you must conquer the A and the B value first. They have to come first. Save the H and the K for last. Now, it doesn't matter if you do the A or the B value first, but since we've never dealt with the B value, let's hold off on that one. We're going to start with the A value. Okay, so when I'm looking at my log graph, the A value is the number in front of the log that is multiplying to my log, which if you see here, the thing in front of my log is a negative. But remember, if you don't see something in front of the log, secretly there is a 1 there. Okay, so my a value is going to be negative 1 for this graph. Okay, so my a value is negative 1. Okay, I'm going to write the equation. So I'm going to add on to my previous equation, which is this right here. I'm just going to add on my a value to it. So it'll be y equals negative 1 times log base 5 of x. 
Okay, and before we decide the points, I can already tell you what the graph's going to do. So all a negative A value will do, remember the A value deals with vertical things. Okay, so a negative A value will reflect in a vertical motion. So we will be crossing the x-axis. Okay, so this one is going to reflect over the x-axis, which I'm actually going to write it below so I have some space to write my point. So I'm going to write it underneath it. So my A value, the negative A, all that's going to do is reflect over the x-axis. Reflect over the x-axis. So I can already predict what's going to happen before I graph it. Isn't that cool, you guys? Okay, so for the A value, okay, we're going to keep the same x's from up here. So we're going to be using these x values. So I don't want to write up here because we're going to be doing different things with the values. So sorry, we're going to use these x's, not the exponential. Ignore those right now. Okay, we're going to be using these x's, and we're going to do something to our y values, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so my x's stay the same. So I'm going to go ahead and write all my x's. Okay, so my x's stay the same. X's stay the same. All right, and I'm going to write my x values in. So we have a one-fifth. We have a one and a five. Okay, now remember, you guys, the parent function was y equals log base five of x. And all we're doing for the a value is tacking on a negative 1. So it's negative 1 times log base 5 of x. So since these are log base 5 of x and these are negative 1 times log base 5 of x, all I have to do is multiply my y values by a negative 1. So first I'm going to start writing negative 1 down because I'm going to multiply them all by negative 1. Okay, then I'm going to take my y values and multiply them to them. So I got negative 1, 0, and 1. Okay, so negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. And negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Okay, so the three points I'm going to plot for my a value are 1 fifth, 1, 1, 0, and 5, negative 1. Holy hot dog, you guys. Okay, let's plot these points. And if we do it correctly, it should reflect over our x-axis. So you should see this part kind of flipping up here and the curved part kind of flipping below. Okay, so we have one-fifth, one, sorry, one-fifth positive one this time. So I'm just going to go over a smidge and up one right here. Looks good. My next point is 1, 0, so still where my last point was, and then 5, negative 1. So 5, negative 1. All right, guys, and we still cannot cross our y-axis, so we got to be very careful when we do this. So I'm going to draw this side first, and this side is going to come down and get really close to the y-axis, but it cannot touch it. There we go. Do you guys see it flipped over the x-axis? Isn't that cool? Okay. So now, once we conquer the A, we have to conquer the B before we even touch the H or the K value. So the B value, we've never dealt with the B value. Okay, now the B value, first of all, is the number inside of your parentheses and is the value that multiplies to X. So if we look at our original equation, okay, I see something in front of my X. And remember, if you don't see anything, secretly there's a negative 1 sitting there. Okay, and remember, you guys, the B value multiplies to the X. Don't mix that up with the H value. The H value adds or subtracts, so be careful. Okay, so my B value is the negative 1. Okay, so it's negative 1. Okay, my current equation, I'm going to add on to my previous equation. I'm just going to add on my B value, so I'm going to add on that negative 1. So we have Y equals negative log, or negative 1 log, doesn't matter, base 5 of negative X. That's my new equation. All right, guys, so the B values affect the X's. The A's affected our Y's. The B's are going to affect the X's. So it's going to be kind of the reverse of what we just did. Okay, so first of all, my Y values stay the same. So my Y's stay the same. And guys, these are the Y values that we just did in our previous problem. You don't go back to the start. Okay, once we keep going, you don't really go back to the start. 
Okay, so I'm going to write down all my y values from the previous problem. They do not change. So my y values are 1, 0, and negative 1. 1, 0, negative 1. All right, now it's my x's that are going to change. Okay, it was negative 1 log base 5 of x, but now my x's, if you see here, went from a positive x to a negative x. Okay, so what that means are all my x's are going to be multiplied by a negative 1, because this is secretly negative 1 times x. So if you look up here, negative 1 is next to the x, which means they're secretly multiplying. Okay, so I'm going to be multiplying all my current x's from the previous problem by negative 1. So I'm going to start by putting negative 1 in all the spots, because we're going to be multiplying by all of them. And my previous x values were 1 fifth, 1, and 5. So when I multiply, we get negative 1 fifth, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, and negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. All right, so these are my new x's I'm going to be plotting, and these are my y's I'm going to plot. So my first point will be at negative 1 fifth 1, then I'll have negative 1 0, then I'll have negative 5 negative 1. Okay, so all that's happening, okay, my most recent graph, which is the pink graph, should now reflect over the y-axis. So this thing right here that kind of looks like this will go to the other side and look like that, if we do it correctly. So let's see what will happen. All right, my first point is negative one-fifth one. So I'm going to go over smidge one-fifth and then up one. My next point is that negative one-zero right there. And my final point is that negative 5, negative 1. Oh man, look at this. I think we're reflecting it. So we're reflecting our most recent graph, which is the pink graph. Okay, I'm going to go this way first. And then remember, we get really close to the Y, but we don't touch. Okay, so we have tackled the parents, the A, and the B. Because once you do the parent function, the A value and the B value, you don't have to make any more charts. Afterwards, it's just simply moving points around the graph for the H or the K. So, let's see what's left in our equation. We tackled the negative one. We tackled the negative one on the B value. And all that's left is a negative two on the end. It is not in our parentheses, so it's not an H. H has to be in your parentheses. Okay, it's a minus two on the variance. So guess what, you guys? This is a K value. Okay, and we do not have to make a chart for the K or the H value. So all I'm going to do is state the K value and tell you what it's going to do and then move it on my graph. Okay, so the K value is negative two. And remember, you guys, the K value, you do not have to think the opposite with it. Okay, so K, think kangaroo goes up or down. Okay, and you think the way you would think it would go. So negative two in your mind tells you down because it's a negative direction. Well, guess what, you guys? You are absolutely correct. My most recent graph, which is the yellow graph, will be moving down two spaces. Bring it on down. Okay, and remember, we're always going to add on to our most recent equation. So my current equation, we have negative log base 5 of negative x, and then I'm going to tack on my k value. So now we've gotten to our final equation. Okay, so all I have to do, I have to take my yellow graph and move it down two spaces. Now, whenever you move the h or the k value, okay, since we have asymptotes going on, asymptotes will move sometimes with the h or the k value, depending on if they are vertical or horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so let's think about this. My asymptote's going up and down. So if I move the graph two spaces down, is that going to move my asymptote? No, it will not, because my asymptote's already going up and down. Now, if we were moving left or right, my asymptote would move. So in logarithms, your asymptote only moves if you go left or right, if you want to memorize it. You do not have to memorize it, though. You can kind of reason through it. So my asymptote's not going to move, so it's actually going to stay the same. So it was x equals 0, and guess what, you guys? It will remain x equals 0. All right, guys, so let's take our yellow graph and move these bad boys down two spaces. So I'm going to take this point and go down two. So one, two. Then move this down, one, two. And then move this down, one, two.
And look, you guys, it just shifted on down two spaces. Pretty cool, right? And the blue graph will be my final graph. Yay. And don't forget, you guys, you need to name your graph. It's very important. This is like the most important part of the whole problem. Okay, the graph deserves a name. So my graph's name is going to be, let's see here, logarithms. It's going to be Larry the Logarithm. Awesome job, you guys.